So I'll give you an example of how uh, uh, these sleeper agents of Christian orthodoxy have managed actually to create a black hole in historical space in the first century in Judea, in Israel. Because they don't want anything that may impact on the historical Jesus. They just like the story in the Gospels. We don't want to find out anything else. Because the thing is, if we find something else out, it may contradict the Gospels, so our job is to discredit it. Now, how does this work? I'll give you a very good example. It happens with everything, by the way. It happens with anything to do with finding something in Israel that relates to the time of Jesus. Some people have decided that nothing good can come from any archaeology from the time of Jesus. Why? Because at best it supports the gospel, so who needs it? And at worst it, it challenges the gospel, so who wants it? So what you do is whenever something comes up, it's very, you see suddenly a swarm of pseudo-academic bees moving in for saying what? Either it's a forgery, that means it's not good to begin with, and if it's not a forgery, oh, it's, it's real, it's late. It's much later than Jesus. It's hundreds of years after Jesus. Or it's early. It's hundreds of years before Jesus. And what happens? You have a black hole in historical space related to Jesus. You j there's just no Jewish history practically from the first century Judea. Why? Because it's all pushed earlier or later. Why? Because we don't want anything to touch the beginnings of Christianity. Let me give you examples. Dead Sea Scrolls, everybody goes, they go around the museums, people line up, they pay 20, 30 bucks a piece to see the Dead Sea Scrolls, it's wonderful. But what happened when they found the Dead Sea Scrolls? The first thing is the sleeper agents of Christian theology, pseudo-academics, jumped up and said, hey, it's a forgery. That was the first reaction, look it up, Google it. For Dead Sea Scrolls forgery, they said. Then they had a problem because they found Dead Sea Scrolls actually in situ, in, in the place where they've been buried at Qumran by the Dead Sea. So they couldn't say it's a forgery. So what? No, it's not a forgery. It's early. It has nothing to do with Christianity. It's interesting, but nothing to do with Christianity. And the only people that can study it is the real scholars. So for some 65 years, from 1948 to the late 19, uh, to, to 1990, right? For over 60 years, you cover it up. Nobody could get out. There were no Dead Sea Scrolls going around the United States and Canada on tours. They weren't there. You couldn't see them. Scholars couldn't have access to them. A small group headed by Father DeVoe and other priests and ministers controlled the Dead Sea Scrolls. Nobody was allowed to look at them except the experts. Because we, the masses, are stupid. And if we read them, we might get the wrong idea. So they had to be filtered by experts. Now what did, what did the f experts do? They studied them very, very slowly. And they cut out little pieces and they gave it to their students to write PhD theses on the little parcels that they parceled out. That way it all stayed in the family. You know, there's, there's a famous movie, I think it was called Spies, it was a comedy. Uh, with uh, Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd where they pretend to be doctors and they're somewhere in Afghanistan and they have to operate on a sheik's uh, 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 son and uh, they're not doctors so they keep saying they keep passing the scalpel around from one to the other doctor 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 this is what happened with the Dead Sea Scrolls doctor here let me give you a little sentence doctor now you're a doctor because I gave you the little the little piece of the Dead Sea Scrolls and that way we doctors who made each other doctors when we we're really priests and ministers, then we can decide for everybody else what the Dead Sea Scrolls really are all about. So A, they're about 150 to 200 years earlier than Jesus. And secondly, they were written by a group called Essenes. Who are these Essenes? Essenes are not mentioned one time in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Not one time. Yet everybody, you Google it, Essenes wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls. Why? Because they can't be Christians. It's very important that they not, none of those texts have anything to do with the beginnings of Christianity. Give the Dead Sea Scrolls to the Essenes. The only way the Dead Sea Scrolls ever saw the light of day was because brave people like Herschel Shanks and Professor Robert Eisenman took it and illegally put it out there under threat of being sued. Only then... Right? Only then, when, when, when the, you had this kind of uh, um, uh, corporate whistleblowers from the world of academia, 
did the world get access to the Dead Sea Scrolls? So, what happened? Give it to the Essenes. Make it early. So first you try to discredit the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's a forgery. Then you try to cover it up. Nobody gets to see it. Then what you do is marginalize them. They're very nice, but they have nothing to do with anybody's theology. Nonsense.